Nick, take me through this reporting. It's, it's another incredible piece of reporting, greatly enhanced by some graphics. I'm going to put some of them up. This is the percentage of Republican legislators in each state who took steps to overturn or discredit the 2020 election. In Arizona, 81 percent of that state's legislators tried to overturn the will of the vote there, certified by a Republican governor. In Wisconsin, 73 percent. In Georgia, 23 percent. In Pennsylvania, 78 percent. Michigan, 48 percent. And Nevada at four. Take us through what you and your colleagues are reporting. Well, what we wanted to do with this story was look at concrete action. So not get into the rhetoric, not get into, you know, what people might be saying on social media um, for political gain, but what did they actually do to try and either overturn the 2020 election or kind of take steps to either discredit or mess with further uh, and future elections? So we focused on either letters to Congress, you know, joining this legally dubious or implausible movement called decertification. Um, and we also looked at audits uh, or so-called audits, I should say. They're not actually official audits, uh, in part because we saw in numerous states that audits weren't just a political messaging uh, uh, movement to try and appeal to the base or former President Trump, but they were actually the first step in what was often more concrete actions to either discredit, overturn the 2020 election or, you know, create a constitutional crisis. Um, we looked at, for example, the uh, so-called audit in Arizona. And in some of the findings that were published that were also debunked by local Republican election officials um, were taken verbatim from the report from that audit and put into a resolution by Mark Fincham, who is a uh, Republican member of the legislature in Arizona, also a candidate for secretary of state right now. Um, and he took those verbatim as justification to try and promote this idea of decertification, which is, again, not a plausible theory, but is one more uh, piece of concrete action that state legislatures are taking to try and mess still with the 2020 election. So tracing that from the audit to decertification to then a statement that Mr. Fincham put about um, the justification for decertification, which is this independent state legislature theory, which is stating that legislatures have complete control over elections and therefore could appoint electors or change laws or things like that. So we wanted to use these concrete actions, including these partisan election reviews and so-called audits to kind of illustrate exactly what happened and just how deep some of these uh, conspiracies and falsehoods about the 2020 election remain in these state houses. Well, Nick, it's an incredible piece of reporting. And I just want to sort of highlight and have you help me do this if I leave anything out, the behaviors, the actions, as you're saying, that you tracked graphically in this reporting. There's, there's decertification. There's the auditing. There's also the alternate slates of electors, which you go through and report out in a data-driven way. Most of what we know about that is because it's believed to be under scrutiny by both the Justice Department and the January 6th Committee. Talk about how rampant the production of alternate fraudulent slates of electors was. Well, that even gets back to kind of what I was just talking about with this independent state legislature doctrine. And that's this legal theory that state legislatures have this absolute control over elections and can indeed send alternate slates of electors. Now, there was varying degrees of support for this in different legislatures. Um, in Michigan, for example, you saw numerous sitting state legislatures uh, trying to help these alternate slates of electors to get into the Capitol building back when uh, the election was being certified. Um, some in, in other states were even electors themselves in Arizona, uh, Mr. Hoffman was. Uh, and then in other states, you actually saw a resistance from some Republicans about, to these um, alternate slates of electors. The Nevada Republican Party was pushing this. They held a press conference with all of the alternate uh, electors um, you know, standing before a camera. So they weren't necessarily hiding from anything. Uh, saying this is what we want to do. We believe that the election was compromised and we need to put forth these electors for Congress to consider. And there wasn't any appetite within the Nevada Republican caucus in either state, uh, in either chamber in the state legislature to go along with that. So it kind of depended on the state as to how warmly they embraced this theory of alternate uh, slates of electors. But almost every legal expert I spoke to said putting forward any kind of alternate slates of electors likely would have been illegal, yet still probably would have caused some kind of constitutional crisis that would have really, you know, unmoored us even further in that uh, tumultuous time after the 2020 election.
And Nick, just one more question about the reporting. I mean, I, I think we first started calling on you almost every day when you were doing reporting out the voter suppression laws in Georgia and the attempts. I think there are 48 states contemplating voter suppression. They call them voter integrity laws predicated on the big lie. This almost seems like the bookend of that body of reporting, that the, the lie fueled efforts to make it harder for communities of color to vote. But the lie also seems to have rushed into office in a structural capacity, the kinds of people who will do whatever Donald Trump wants him to do anyway. Yeah, and we saw, you know, in a lot of those laws that we spoke about last year, and there's also 18 more laws that have been passed this year that um, include some restrictions to voting. You know, in the preambles of a lot of that, it talks about this crisis of confidence in elections. And I think what our reporting shows, based on a lot of the actions that some of these state legislatures took, that they contributed to that erosion of trust in elections by perpetuating these falsehoods and trying to prolong, you know, the either the debate or even overturn um, the 2020 election. And, and, and I don't think, um, you know, it's necessarily over. I, at the end of our story, we look at how uh, former President Trump is trying to mold certain state legislatures to fit this idea and to have more closely aligned allies in state legislatures, possibly for the next election. Um, in Michigan specifically, you know, he's endorsed 10 candidates for state legislatures, some who are even challenging current Republican incumbents. Um, his uh, committee, Save America, has maxed out to nine of those candidates. Uh, and what he asked those candidates is, you know, one of the criteria that he's weighing when either him or staff talk to them is, you know, what's your thought on electors and how do you think state legislature should play in these elections? Um, and he told me that that's a, you know, a very important thing. And when I was talking to one of those candidates, uh, John Lindsay, a state Senate candidate in Michigan, he said, was it me in that seat? I would have sent, I would have voted to send Trump electors to Washington on January 6th.